Manuel Newman's goal with this theory was to explain the growth and spread of public opinion, as well as examine its power and influence. Public opinion is the opinions on controversial issues that one can express in public without isolating oneself. Public opinion can influence one's view by exposure to a variety of media outlets and other numerous sources of information. The influence and power media has over opinion is able to produce a majority and minority belief within the masses. The spiral of silence refers to the increasing pressure that people feel to conceal their views when they think they are in the minority. So how and why does a spiral of silence work? Noelle Newman developed a model that contains three main points to explain her studies of spiral of silence. There's the human ability to gauge trends in public sentiment, which is when we use our five senses to feel out what was going around us and can generally predict what the overall outcome of something is going to be. Individuals justifiable fear of isolation. Isolation and rejection are seen as cruel punishment and extremely undesirable among most, if not all, people. People's hesitancy to express minority views, which naturally you could expect, comes from the fear of isolation. If a person feels their opinion is in the minority of public opinion, they are more likely to stay silent in fear of rejection and isolation if they voiced their opinion. Some stay silent to identify with a winning opinion. Some stay silent out of pressure. Regardless of motivation, public opinion is a strong source of pressure and can be increased, supported, and accelerated by the media. The media expresses so much of the majority public opinion, it accelerates the rate in which the minority opinion is muted. The 2008 elections between President Obama and Senator McCain influenced a real scenario which will help explain this theory. I was in college in 2008 and I remember the heated debates in my community about who to vote for. The amount of media we were exposed to for a candidate on a day-to-day -day basis was tremendous. Our school asked us to remain diplomatic and not to bring our public debates and opinion into the school so we could focus on our studies. We weren't even allowed to turn on the TV because the news and candidate updates were everywhere. We were asked to stay neutral in school because violence had also broken out in several areas of our community over politics and the staff wanted to ensure the safety of the school students. One day, a bunch of students decided to have a politician's day to show support for their candidate. Obama's campaign supported and encouraged the younger population to get involved and vote, and this really touched several of my classmates. However, when Politician's Day came, I saw a sea of Obama t-shirts and signs and people chanting, Change! Yes, we can! in the hallways. One of my classmates had bravely worn to school a shirt in support of McCain. I felt the tension in my stomach as I saw three women bombard her with threats and discriminant abusive words. She wanted to stand up for her opinion and do what she thought the other students were doing, but either she wasn't aware of the majority public opinion circulating or she wanted to stand up for the minority opinion and try to avoid being isolated. Her decision was bold, but almost landed her in the hospital. I and a few other women were nearby and also had different views on the candidates, but we not only feared isolation, we feared rejection and potential bodily harm. This type of scenario was seen on TV frequently and it was safer to stay silent than to oppose the public opinion. And as the past has shown us, Obama won the 2008 election with an overwhelming amount of support. Public opinion was able to gauge the majority opinion and combined with the constant media presence, it therefore made the minority opinion further muted throughout the election.